Welcome to 13 Cubed. As promised, in this episode, we're going to jump into Mac OS Forensics, which I know has been a very frequently requested topic. So, fun fact, prior to 2001, back in the pre-Mac OS 10 days, I was not an Apple fan. Sure, like many others my age, I had been exposed to Apple IIs and 2GSs in school, and had written my share of basic programs and played countless hours of Ultima, but I was hardcore DOS, and later begrudgingly used Windows 95 and 98. But that changed in 2001 when Apple released Mac OS X. You see, my main complaint with Apple revolved around the OS. Since that time, and for the past 20 years or so, Macs have been my daily drivers. So in this episode, we're going to talk about a file that you have no doubt been exposed to if you're a Mac user. And that file is the .ds underscore store. I know you've seen them, especially if you've connected USB flash drives or other external media used on a Mac to a Windows PC. In fact, there are even utilities that offer to clean these files from network and other various locations across the system because many people find them annoying. But they do serve a purpose and are actually forensically relevant as well. So let's learn more. We'll start with the basics. The DS store file has been around for quite a while. I've seen some documentation that states that Mac OS 10 version 10.4, known as Tiger, was the first version in which they appeared. However, they've actually been around since the initial release of Mac OS 10, 10.0, known as Cheetah. Tiger, however, extended their use to support a new feature first added with that OS called Spotlight which if you're a Mac user, you are no doubt familiar with. So yes, 10.4 was the first version of Mac OS X that used DS store files to store spotlight related metadata, specifically comments. Anyway, enough with the history lesson. The entire purpose of the DS store or desktop services store file is akin to desktop.ini and shell bags in Windows. So if you're thinking to yourself, why should I care about this from a forensics perspective? Well, there's your answer. While they aren't as useful as their aforementioned Windows counterparts, we can still glean a lot of valuable data from their examination, as we'll see. They can show us the folders accessed within the Finder, which of course is the macOS GUI. They store window view settings, icon positions, sorting preferences, window sizes and positions, and other metadata for the folder in which they reside. The files are created in the enclosing parent folder when that folder is viewed in icon, list, or gallery view, but not in column view, strangely enough, which happens to be the view that I prefer. And this doesn't just apply to local folders, but also to external volumes and network locations, which explains why Windows users so frequently encounter them. Lastly, let's talk about a few caveats you should be aware of. First off, full paths are not included within the DS store files themselves. When we take a look at a tool that will help us parse these files, you'll see that a particular record type called trash putback locations ends up being an exception to this. Timestamps are also not included within DS store files. So in other words, each action that's recorded in the DS store file associated with each record type does not have a timestamp associated with that. That said, parsing tools like the one we're going to take a look at can derive some time related information based upon file system timestamps for the DS store files themselves. In other words, the creation and modification times for the files. Lastly, the data is volatile. When a file is deleted or moved, its associated records are also removed. And when a file is renamed, its associated records are also renamed. All right, so now that you know the basics, let's see this in action. All right, so here we are in a Mac OS Catalina virtual machine. Not exactly the fastest thing, but it'll get the job done. And if I bring up terminal and do a PWD, you'll notice I'm in the user's demo directory or the root of my home user. If I find all the DS store files, you'll notice that there will be none because this is a brand new system and I haven't done anything with it yet. By the way, the two greater than at the end is simply dumping standard error to dev null so we don't clutter up the screen with any locations that find can't access. If I hide that and click on finder, 
we are now looking at the contents of my home directory, and that in and of itself will have created a DS store file. You'll notice that we're looking at it in icon view, which is the default, but across the top, I can choose list view. The icon next to that would be column view. And then lastly, we have the gallery view. Remember that the column view does not end up generating DS store files. Now, if we double click on documents, we have generated a DS store file for the documents location. There are five files here and any options, any icon arrangements or sorting, for example, that data will be stored in the DS store file. So if I sort by size here, when you come back to this folder and you've ever wondered how it remembers what sorting settings you had, well, that's where it's stored. Notice test one here. I'm going to do a command delete and go ahead and send that to the trash and you'll see why in just a little bit. So bear with me. So we have four files remaining in this location sorted by size. So let's keep that in mind. So if we go back to our terminal, we should expect to see some DS store files. Here's one in the root of the home folder as expected. And then after that in the root of documents as expected. But what about trash? It turns out there is actually a DS store file in the dot trash, which by the way is where the trash is located for your user. But if I try to list it, you'll notice it says operation not permitted. You're probably thinking just use sudo. Well, that won't work either. And the reason why is because of something called system integrity protection or SIP, which is enabled by default in Mac OS Catalina. And that's a good thing. The operating system is protecting certain locations just as a security feature which again is good. So why do I need to see the DS store file in the trash? Well, let's take a look at the trash. Well, there's our test one file. If I right click on that test one file, you'll notice the put back option, which I'm sure you've seen before. If you've ever wondered how it knows where to put the file back, well, that is among the information stored within the DS store file in this location. So I want to show it to you. Because of that, I'm going to do something a bit stupid and I'm going to disable SIP. I would totally not recommend doing this in a real production system. It's enabled for a reason and it is a good thing. But because I do want to show you that that DS store file is present in the trash and I also want our tool that we're going to look at to be able to parse it, I'm going to temporarily turn it off. So let's take a look at exactly how we would do that. All right, let's go ahead and restart this machine and I'm going to be holding down command R to boot it into recovery mode, which is how we can disable SIP. Of course, I'm going to greatly speed this up instead of making you wait on this because it takes several minutes. But in recovery mode, we're simply going to launch a terminal. So we'll go up to the utilities menu at the top and we will choose terminal. We're going to type the CSR util command space disable. And once we do so, you'll notice it says that SIP has been disabled and that we need to restart for the changes to take effect. So let's do that. I will again speed up this section and we'll boot back into Mac OS Catalina, log in and go ahead and open our terminal. And now we're back where we started. Let's try again to access the trash. Okay, now let's do an ls-l and there is our test one file that we sent to the trash earlier. So. That looks good. What about the DS store? Well, if I do an ls-la, there it is. Okay, great. So we've successfully disabled SIP. We can see the DS store file. Now what? Well, you may have noticed that I have a file on my desktop called DS store parser. A digital forensics researcher named Nicole Ibram wrote a tool called DS store parser that will, as the name implies, parse the structure within these files and output the data in easy to read TSV files. So let's take a look at how to use it. What I'm going to do is simply run DS store parser with the dash H flag for help. And you will see that there are only two options, dash S for source and dash O for output. So let's specify dash S and just give it our user's demo directory. So it'll parse all the DS store files therein. And for the output, I'm just going to do a period, which is the current directory, in this case, the desktop. And it's already done. It parsed 21 records. Remember that number when we actually analyze it. And you'll notice the full paths to the DS store files that it was able to find and parse, including the ones we saw before and a new one from the desktop location. Okay, if we look at the desktop, there are the files as expected. Next, what we're going to do is copy these over to our analysis workstation. 
open them up in Microsoft Excel and take a look at the output. The first of the three generated files that we'll look at is the DS Store Folder Access Report, which will show us records within the DS Store structure that relate to folder access. You'll notice the demo slash dot location, which is the root of the home folder, the first location we saw when we clicked the finder icon. And then right after that, you'll notice the documents location, which was the second location that we looked at during the demo. So that lines up with the folders that we accessed. The record type shows the particular DS store record type. You'll see things like icon view properties, opened folder in new tab, et cetera, et cetera. And then if you look at the record data over here, you will see the specific window bounds and actual locations, background information, things like this. Here are the timestamps. Again, these are the timestamps associated with the DS store file itself. These are not timestamps embedded inside of the DS store file. Next, you will notice that we have the permissions, which by default are 644 as you can see, so RWRR. We also have the size, block, and then lastly, the source file, which was derived based on the location in which it found the DS store file. Because remember, the full path information is not stored within the actual DS store structure. So pretty self-explanatory for the first of the three reports. Next up, let's take a look at the miscellaneous info report, which will show records that relate to finder comments, locations of icons, modification dates, sizes, and other information. Notice the desktop documents, downloads, movies, music, pictures, and public directories, which were all of the home folders that we saw when we first clicked the finder icon. You'll see the DS store file located on the desktop, which was present when we first started the demo. You'll even see desktop icon location as the record type. Then check this out. Here is the test one file that we deleted in the trash. Notice we have the trash putback location and the trash putback name below it. First off, the location is indeed the full path of where that file was. And then test one is just the name of the file. So that is what I was talking about when we do see the full path. And here are the other files located in the documents directory that were left after we deleted test one. Notice it is of type icon location, and remember they did shift location based on size. If we scroll on over, you'll notice the timestamps, permissions, and other information. And then for the source file, this is derived from the file that was being parsed, as you can see right here. So again, a very self-explanatory report. This is the miscellaneous info. Lastly, this one's the easiest of all. It's the all report, and all it is is the aggregate of the previous two reports. Notice there are 21, minus the header, rows located here. And 21, if you recall, was the number of records that the tool said that it parsed. So that lines up with the output that we're seeing. And again, this is just everything all together in one report. So as you can see, the DS Store Parser tool is very easy to run and the output is very easy to analyze. You can see how this would very much be forensically relevant to many different types of investigations. So let's jump into the final section of the video and wrap things up. I wanted to quickly show you the BUD1 header, which is associated with these Apple Desktop Services store files, as well as what one would look like when viewed with a hex editor. You'll notice some readable ASCII strings on the right side. This particular file happens to be the DS store file that was created within the desktop directory from our previous demo. You'll recall that when we viewed DS store parser's output, a single entry was present within the miscellaneous info report, the second report we looked at, for the DS store file located in the desktop directory. This contained a record type of DILC, desktop icon location, corresponding to the icon representing DS Store Parser located on the desktop. You can read that text within the ASCII output, as well as see a reference to the DILC blob. However, analyzing DS Store files with a hex editor or via strings is clearly not going to be able to show us nearly as much detail as a utility that is purpose-built to parse these data structures like DS Store Parser. So what have we learned? 
Well, one of the more common forensic benefits of analyzing DS store files is to determine the original file name and path for files and folders located in the trash, as we saw in the demo with the trash putbacks. But also keep in mind that the presence of a DS store file will generally indicate that a user has interacted with the location in which the DS store file exists via Finder. In other words, we may be able to use a DS store file to prove that a user was aware of the existence of a particular folder and that that folder was indeed accessed via the macOS GUI. Also keep in mind that when copying entire folders of files, as well as when compressing folders, those DS store files are going to go along for the ride and will be included within the contents. Lastly, if you're interested in the details of the file format, I will leave a link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this macOS forensics episode. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next episode.